but uh, he has availed himself, and uh, you, the viewers at home, are able to take part in this conversation that we're having with uh, various business people here at the venue. And uh, don't forget the SMS numbers and the uh, uh, t- uh, the uh, Twitter and uh, other Facebook, the social media pages that you can use uh, to pose those questions, and we'll certainly put them through to the minister. With that, then, let's uh, please now welcome the Minister of Public Enterprises, uh, Malusi Gigaba, to join us on stage. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and to the viewers at home. I want to greet the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, the chairperson of Transnet, the other board members who might be here that I might not have seen, and all the distinguished ladies and gentlemen who are present here. I first want to congratulate the New Age on their first birthday. Um, and, and wish them well in, into the future. When earlier on they put on my makeup, I insisted that I, I don't like the red lipstick, so, so I asked that they don't put on lipstick. Um, I would rather use my own. The Department of Public Enterprises, as you know, has the responsibility for shareholder oversight over eight state-owned enterprises. Our mandate is to leverage these SOEs as strategic instruments for the developmental state, to guide them to become catalysts in creating jobs and growing the economy so that their impact is optimized for the rest of society. In this regard, The SOEs must be viewed in relation to the broader impact they have on the economy and society as a whole. Through the SOEs, the department seeks to facilitate the participation and push for an increased stake in the economy by the majority of citizens, either through access to labor markets or productive activities. SOEs should correct market failures because capital markets have an inherent bias to short-term gains, in spite of their often repeated claims that they prefer long-term planning. Our vision is to continue to provide economic governance tied to SOE multiple goals, which include attracting and driving investments, enhancing efficiencies and transformation of all state-owned enterprises, their customers and suppliers, creating jobs, building industrial capabilities, linking small and medium businesses to markets, either through communication platforms or transport, and developing responsive skills to economic or supply demands. In order to implement this vision, we have, made five, we have had to make five key changes to the way SOEs are managed. Firstly, develop an investment planning framework that is linked to long-term strategic economic priorities of the country that are not determined by balance sheet constraints. Secondly, expand and diversify our sources of funding for investment plans beyond the balance sheet and the fiscals to include our development finance institutions and the private sector. Thirdly, boldly support localization in the procurement programs in order to support local suppliers and hence promote investments in national industrial capabilities. And finally, enhance coordination between SOE programs and all levels of government to ensure that SOE capabilities are fully leveraged, that implementation is accelerated, and the impact of programs is optimized. In order to implement this vision and the associated enabling initiatives, the department has to build a range of institutional capabilities to play a number of roles. These include the department as the shareholder manager, secondly, the department as a stakeholder manager, thirdly, the department as a change manager, and finally, the department as a nation builder, 
providing decisive economic leadership to align stakeholders behind SOE strategies so that effective developmental collisions can be built. State-owned enterprises are the government's specialist in intervention instruments in the economy and, ex and extended arm of government for delivery of critical services. These companies further the country's domestic and foreign policy agenda within the SADC region in particular in Africa as a whole in pursuit of both infrastructure rollout and the commercial and other commercial plans. ESCOM, for example, must ensure the security of supply of electricity in our country and support in energy infrastructure rollout on the continent. Currently, ESCOM has marshaled the complex process of our new builds and is in ushering renewable energy generation and investing in new technologies to, to optimize our country's plans to reduce carbon emissions from its coal-fired power stations. In this regard, it is the main repository of special skills and expertise necessary to execute this mammoth build program. In respect of transport and logistics, Transnet has assured us that it is well on its way to improving, effic to improving efficiencies and capacity both on rail and ports. Significantly, this year we witnessed the upgrading of some of our ports as well as improvements of efficiencies on rail through scheduled trains. We intend further to expand our rail and port capacity, which will create even more jobs. Together with this, Transnet shall soon announce a new capital expenditure plan and a revised CAPEX timeline. This will help, for example, to implement critical projects such as the road to rail migration, develop the Waterbeck rail link, as well as the rail link between Swaziland and South Africa, which will ease the rail congestion in Emelo and facilitate more coal transportation to Richards Bay. However, South Africa needs urgently to improve its infrastructure optimization in order to support local content and industrialization. We are also improving our locomotives and updating the fleet with more powerful and environmentally friendly locomotives. In the long run, we aim to move from mere replacement of the aging fleet to, a to adding capacity. In this regard, we are finalizing our fleet procurement strategy, which shall take into account the economic demand and the resultant economies of scale in purchasing locomotives over a longer term. Together with South African Airways and South African Express, we are exploring strategies to expand our African footprints in order to position our airlines as the main carriers on the continent. We would like them to increase their share of the African market, be significant players in the transportation of people between various African countries and between Africa and the world, and facilitate and promote trade within the continent and between the continent and the globe. Our arms manufacturer, Dinel, is showing signs of recovery. Key to Dinel's success will be its ability to increase its order book from the Def Department of Defense and win more international contracts and thus optimize our manufacturing capabilities and skills. Our plans for Alexco, the state diamond mining company, is to reposition it to play a significant role in the mining of legitimate diamonds in the continent and to provide the skills expertise that are clearly required by our neighbors whilst contributing to the country's beneficiation strategy. I am informed that the West Africa cable, in which broadband Infraco owns 11%, is about to be lit. This will allow Infraco to provide its customers with capacity, both on the national long distance and internationally. We have worked persistently in sorting out Infraco's internal capacity and reassessing its business case and the government's role in this sector. Given SAFCOL's role, the South African Forestry Company Limited in, in community development and optimizing government's participation in the forestry industry, we are paying attention to turning the company around and ensuring that it invests in innovation to support our airlines turn towards biofuels in support of the country's green, green economy strategies. Of course, the above projects can only succeed if we have a consensus on the nature of the partnerships that the economy requires from the government, business and labor. 
we need practically and pragmatically to identify projects which can assist us to define this partnership as we work to develop our society. We know we still have some way to go to implement our approach in its entirety. However, we are resolute that we should spend neither strength nor effort in positioning our state-owned enterprises as critical agents for development, and I thank you very much.